Good morning. It's the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force Legal and Justice Systems Committee. It is 11.30 a.m. on 11, uh, April 11th. We're going to go ahead and start with the land acknowledgement statement. Before we begin, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Lummi, Nooksack, Samish, and Samiyama people who have cared for and tended this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth. We pay respect to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. All right. So um, we've called the meeting to order and we've finished that. And we're on to 2023 priorities, um, as well as I'm kind of blending in the annual report um, as we want to review and discuss what we want to have on the annual report. So um, is there any priorities that anybody would like to um, address for um, the Legal and Justice Committee? Don't everybody jump up at once. Okay, this is awesome. We're gonna have a really fast meeting because there's no priorities. Um, as we go into the 2023 annual report, maybe we will um, have some thoughts there. Um, on the we we want to come up with um, things that we want to summarize um, for the annual report for the legal and justice committee. Something that was brought up at the steering committee was competency and restoration, but I thought that was more behavioral health or um, of the joint meetings. But um, please let me know if you think that there's certain items that we need to be focusing in on. Well. I believe also at the at the steering committee, they mentioned that some folks from Kitsap County were gonna come to one of the task force meetings and do a presentation on their reentry program. Yes, and I think um, I don't see Eric Ritchie or um, Louise Trapp on, but I think both of them are involved in the new reentry program. So um, that might be something we want to hear from more in the future. And we also want to keep the reentry as um, something for, I think, our, our annual report. Um, and then we want to continue to refine the pretrial processes unit risk assessment. Dave, do you have any um, comments on that that you would like to add? Judge Freeman. Saw him. There he comes. Sorry Morning. about that. That's okay. I'm having to multitask. I'm in the civil trial right now. So oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um I don't think so. We're looking at the best landing spot for pretrial services right now. Um, we're also in the process of trying to, to gather data as to one, the impacts that uh, pretrial services have had and the, the risk assessment tool that was implemented. So I don't think I have a whole lot to add to that. Okay, um, that's all right. If you do have anything else that uh, you think is pertinent for um, next year or our annual report, it would be helpful. Um, and then I saw Eric Ritchie just joined us. Eric, are you available to let us know what's going on with jail reentry? As it appears, you're on a new committee. And um, Tank said that we might be having somebody from Kitsap introduced at the next task force meeting. Yes. So Janelle McPhee will be uh, presenting at a task force meeting. She's the head of the Washington State Reentry um, Task Force. and um, I have nothing more to add. Okay. 
Um, Eric, can you tell us a little bit more about that task force and what its mission is? Well, generally, so I'm brand new to it, but generally it's a program that's uh, looking at best practices, trying to make uh, reentry a, uh, I guess, more central uh, focus for um, mainly prisons, but also that they're now looking at jails. And so anyway, I got on the, the uh, task force thinking that I might be able to bring information back from this organization to Whatcom County to uh, get as good of a program for reentry in place as possible. Uh, Janelle's very knowledgeable. She's uh, she's been working in reentry for a long time. She's a brand new director for this program, but she's uh, she's presented on this topic to a whole bunch of different agencies. So I don't know. I think I think it should be interesting. Can, can you just tell me, but not you, maybe Jill? Can, uh, the, what's the date of that presentation? I believe Stephen Gockley issued the invitation for the May task force meeting. Um, that might change. So, but that's the proposed date so far. What was that date in May? Uh, let me look. May 15th. Um, on other. I Items that um, we've looked at over the last year, um, the DV MRT program and DV POTS program is something that is being heavily used now. That's, um, I think that would probably be beneficial to keep on um, for the annual report. Um, is there any other, and the, we talked about the inmate tablet program and we might be able to get an update from Caleb. Um, on where that's at, but is there is there anything else that um, jumps out at anybody that we really want to make sure we have on the annual report, or that you want further information on um, for this next year? All right, um, this is this is going great. Thank you, Jill. Help me out. Yeah, I just wanted to let you all know that because of all the work you're all putting in with the Justice Project, we've decided to keep this annual report pretty small and, and contained. So it's not going to be a, a big in-depth report like you've seen in the past, um, in past years. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Okay. Um, the other thing that we may want to look at for future is the Justice Project needs and recommendations that's coming out um, for workshop five. Um, there's some items on there if people want to look at that. And um, if you have anything that you would like to see on the next agendas or you want us to do more research on, um, please let um, myself, Arlene, and Jill know, and we will make sure we get that happening. Um, other business, I know it's been brought up in the past several times, um, they want to study bail, and if that's something that um, the committee members think that we should be addressing, I'm happy to bring that in on and have um, other speakers on that. I know it's kind of awkward at um, with the jail restrictions now, I mean, it, it's pretty much for felonies because we're really not seeing misdemeanors being booked, but um, it might change in the future, not anytime soon. But any other thoughts on that as an agenda item in the future? So I kind of like the idea of addressing bail just because so many people don't understand what bail is all about. They don't understand why we do it. They don't understand... Um, uh, who uh, imposes bail. I mean, this is general public information that folks should know, and, and they don't, you know, they, um, so anyway, I, I think it'd be worthwhile uh, talking about what our procedures are here in Whatcom County and what the laws are and things like that, just so that, and, and you talked about a report, I'd love that the public uh, see and understand what it is that we do and why. All right, I appreciate that. Thanks, Eric. Arlene? Don't blame, don't blame oh, the sheriff sorry. for setting the bail too high. Don't blame, blame the <laughs> I guess or how about blame the prosecutor for too low? For a from a PhD blaming me for setting it too high. I wish I could set it. <laughs> <laughs> Arlene? Yeah, I'd really like to hear Eric about the changes 
that have occurred recently in the last year or so. Um, and I think the public should know that too, that, that, um, that you've been addressing that or someone has anyway. Yeah, um, I think that you were, so we, we had some bail policies that we started off in this office uh, early on. And, uh, you know, things, things just changed completely with, with the pandemic and people were released a lot more frequently than even what we would like from this office. And um, I don't know, we, uh, I, I just think it's probably good for everyone to know. Judge Freeman, any input on that? Well, I feel like I'm a broken record on this, typically, which is just essentially what Eric said, that the jail population is entirely different than it was three years ago. I think there's a there's some pretty significant common misunderstandings right now um, as to, to who is being held on bail. I, I'm assuming, uh, Raylene, that I mean, I, I haven't seen any holds on misdemeanors in quite some time, so that that's not the issue anymore, and and there are jail booking restrictions. So oftentimes, folks that would have been booked previously are not being booked. So we're not seeing them in custody on first appearances. They're being summoned in on on arraignment calendars. So I, I know I'm a broken record here, but it's it's just a different population than what we were seeing three years ago, and certainly what we were seeing five years ago when the the Vera report came out. Yeah, we we typically were our our bookings that for misdemeanors are domestic violence and the DUIs and the DUIs are pretty much a rapid turnaround as soon as they're sober they're released. Um, and then if I am going in it's because somebody was booked on felonies and they had misdemeanor cases but last week we had somebody that was issued a criminal citation um, to appear in court for a DWS third and no admission airlock, we issued our 12th warrant on her. Um, and the officers actually attempted to go to her house because she was local to try to bring her into court. Um, we thought maybe we would have luck that way, but uh, no such luck. So um, there is definitely frustration um, from law enforcement on the misdemeanor levels of individuals just you know they know they know what's happening out there and they know that it doesn't matter how much bail we set um in our courts i mean the judge the judge still goes through the questions um you know are they a flight risk and you know have they have warrants and they're still going through those but um you know the ones that are local know that nothing's going to happen to them so, Raylene, it's more than just the officers who are upset. It, it's, uh, I, I say the general community is upset. And we're talking about downtown Bellingham, especially where folks are, you know, out on bail or out on pretrial release conditions that don't include bail and continuing to cause trouble. And, uh, you know, we have people with, with warrant after warrant after warrant. We get, we get, I can't even tell you how many cases I get in, you know, every day that uh, include, um, you know, warrants for other things they had done. I, I mean, I have people with, uh, today I had someone with like nine pending felonies and they're out <laughs> and, you know, and they got picked up on something new. So, right. so um, you know, our community knows that and, you know, they don't know who or why, wh what's our problem. And I'm not blaming anybody other than we don't have the space for them. And that's, I think, something that our community needs to know. Okay. Is that fair, Bill? I think it's fail. We're failing to protect the community because we don't have the resources available to to do that. It's been a long-standing problem. Well, it, it looks like um, that's probably going to be a great agenda item for the next um, legal and justice subcommittee. Is um, anybody has recommendations on? I mean, Eric, I would love for prosecutors' input. I can. Um, get other individuals to chime in, um, work on some of the district or municipal court judges as well. Um, Judge Freeman, do you have any input on anybody else that we might need to want to include at that meeting? Not that I can think of. Uh, I mean, from my perspective, I, yeah, I, I, again, it's not taking a position on who should be or shouldn't be having bail, it's just an observation that this is a different population than what we were talking about three years ago. And so that's uh, really my only position is that it's different. And I think there's a mis 
misunderstanding oftentimes when we're talking about it, even in, in some pretty well-informed groups as to uh, who is being detained on bail and who is not. Uh, you know, from, from the judicial perspective, there, there aren't many levers that we can use. Um, the, the one thing that we are working on, and I think it's been brought up at the committee level, but the judges will be implementing further restrictions on continuances and particularly focusing on in custody cases and and how those are continued so that's we don't have many tools in the toolbox when it comes to this but that is the one aspect that the judges are looking at in order to uh, try to at least move cases through faster thank you um arlene Yes, I'm wondering if there's something that um, you think we should be uh, covering or doing to address the problems that you're bringing up to us, which are very important. Uh, citizen safety is number one. And um, I just wonder in your positions what you're thinking. Eric? Eric? Yeah, thanks. So, um, so what we're thinking about is a new jail, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the the problem with that is, is it's so far off. So we're we're toying around with some of the, some different things that we might be able to do with our current facilities. We're looking into that. Uh, no promises yet, but we're looking into it. I'll just I'll just put it out there. Um, Dave, I'm wondering what you're talking about when you say we have a different population. You know, what what do you what exactly are you referring to? I'm referring to the seriousness of the charges. You know, when I took the bench three and a half years ago, I was a pro tem in municipal court and municipal courts were still holding folks pre-trial, depending on the charge on occasion. That just is not occurring anymore. Um, and the seriousness of the, the felonies that are now being held. And again, a lot of that booking restrictions, that's part of it. it it's just a resources issue. There, there aren't enough resources. And and that's the net effect. So that's what I mean by population. It's it's just a different uh, when we were targeting pretrial release. Um, it's a different population of of offenders that we're targeting than we were, let's say, five six years ago when the Vera report came out. Um, so that, yeah, hopefully that's, that's clarified. No, yeah, that's great. Um... And then Chris, the sheriff would say that he's got a different population of people in a jail as well, including a whole lot of mentally ill folks who are not getting their uh, restoration done. Um, you know, so we have that going on too. Absolutely, I'm glad you brought that up. That my it, friend mentioned that. It's a much different, a much more difficult population to manage in the jail too than we just had a few years ago because of the dangerous forms of mental illness and the uh, people have been there. Actually, I think degrading they've been in there so long waiting for the trial so or so, um, or competency or whatever the issue is of the day and dave you mentioned something really interesting you mentioned that uh the judges are going to clamp down some on the uh i guess continuances uh and be focusing especially on people who are in custody yeah last year we implemented a new local court rule that required continuances on the record for any case that was older than two years. That does not focus in on the in-custody population, which I think is what we're all the most concerned with about right now. So I think the next step, next logical step for us is to focus in on continuances with respect to in-custody defendants. The, the faster we can move them through, the, the better. Now, just having a court rule there doesn't necessarily mean these cases get to trial sooner. We have been looking at the numbers since we implemented our court rule last year. And I will say it doesn't appear that we've had much success, but part of that could also be what you and Bill have, have mentioned, the, you know, the, the delay that we've had in restoration services, that's going to skew the numbers pretty significantly right now on pretrial. And it's not like we can move those any faster. So Dave, I'm gonna jump in again. Uh, I'm curious when you say not, not not much success, and you might be saying that we don't have much success moving people out of the jail, but we've had, tell me if I'm wrong, we've had success where we've had more trials than, than we've had pre-pandemic, pre if, if I can, am I, am I correct? Uh, I would say in the last year, I mean, I certainly have, I think I've been in trial about six months of 2022, um, but, 
yes, I, I do think we've utilized courtroom space a little bit more. But again, we I'm in a civil trial this week. We had a number of civil trials going. That's a reflection that that we're not fully using the capacity uh, for criminal cases. So there is still some capacity there. Um, so and when I mean uh, we're not seeing quite the success, we we haven't seen uh, we review at least Judge Jones and I every month when Wendy sends out the aging report, we're always looking at those averages and we have not seen a significant decline since we implemented the two year rule. So while we are getting a few more things to trial, I think successfully, um, I'm not sure it's impacted the the aging report as of yet. Thank you. I noticed you popped in earlier. Um, do you have something you wanted to add? I was just wondering during the conversation about um, the the differences in the jail population from three years ago and five years ago. I was wondering if if it's possible for Caleb to just do a a quick and dirty. A summary comparing and contrasting the different populations in in those time frames, current versus three years ago versus five years ago. It might be an interesting graphic for the year end report. If something like that is possible, I don't know how easy or feasible it would be to put something like that together. But it was just a thought. Let Too me easy talk. Lots of data. Yeah, let me talk to him. I know that we're, he's under incredible demands trying to keep up right. with uh, workloads now, but uh, and trying to get people hired so we have adequate staffing. But let me talk to him and find out how complex or how simple that would be to do. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Arlene? Yes, I wanted to ask Bill, um, being that there's this time uh, lab, lack, gap that is ahead of us for the changes. Is there anything that you've thought about to pump up the care of the people in prison uh, to make a difference in terms of the management and their uh, degree of trauma? Other than the uh, social services, the behavioral health services we already have now, and they're having difficulty keeping those positions uh, filled. I can't think of anything extraordinary we're doing. Uh, when we have, uh, and, and just to be candid with you, I hope, uh, I guess I'm expressing my frustration somewhat where the state has failed to deal with this restoration and competency. And those are the people that are probably the most impacted and, uh, very, we see very, very little progress. And it's not just a problem uh, unique to Whatcom County. Ours may be more acute because we don't have the, we don't have the specialized facilities and we don't have adequate uh, space, but it's a statewide issue. All the jails in Washington are as frustrated as we are with that uh, situation. Thank you. Um, so, as I'm listening to all of this, I'm I'm hearing that we can do something on bail next next month for legal injustice. But when we do that, we're kind of breaking it down into how bail is set and why bail is requested, and then we're looking at the safety of the individuals when they're not being booked, when they're not being held, safety of the population, and other effects of that. And then we're also looking at the current jail population and issues with that. Am I missing something else or, or is that the right breakdown for us to look at? Okay, no head nods, no movement. Thinking I've got it. Thank you. Um, any other business? Are you all going to be really, really sad if I let you enjoy the rest of your afternoon and lunch? Okay, I, I, I think uh, I think we're going to be able to um, actually go to public comment. We don't want to miss that. Is there anybody in the public, Joe? I don't have any attendees in uh, the conference room or in the Zoom attendance list. 
So it doesn't look like there will be any public comments. Uh, Raylene and Arlene, if you could stay after for just a minute, that would be great. Thank you. Be happy to. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. Great. Thanks.